What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Mechanism version 10. Now today guys, we're gonna be setting up the isotopic centrifuge and producing fizzle fuel. Now if you haven't seen last episode, I would highly advise you go and watch it. In it, we set up the production of sulfuric acid, which you can see in front of me right here. It's a relatively large setup and the reason it's so important that you have this done is because sulfuric acid is going to be the main component we use in actually producing fizzle fuel. Now it's not the only component we're gonna use. There are a couple other things that we add into it, but it's the most difficult to produce by far, and it's pretty much the base starting point for what we're going to be hooking up today. So while it's not the only thing that we need to process today, it's pretty much all we need because everything else is really simple to get. The good news though is that once you have the production of sulfuric acid set up, you pretty much have the hard part out of the way. Everything we set up today is going to be really simple compared to last episode. We need a couple new machines we haven't worked with before, and that'll be really cool to go over those, but we're going to be duplicating some and we have a lot less than before. I believe we only need four machines to set up today, and only two of them are new. So. Without further ado, let's get into the crafting, and thankfully there really isn't as much today as we had last episode in terms of both quantity and the expense of the resources we need. Uh, there are a couple expensive things in this, but for the most part, it's relatively simple to make. So we're going to be making the isotopic centrifuge, which is a new thing we're going to be setting up today. We're going to be setting up the chemical dissolution chamber, which is also new, and then we are going to be doing a chemical oxidizer and a chemical infuser, both of which we used last episode, and we're going to be using them in a very similar way today as just sort of intermediate processing steps to get to the final product. So we're going to grab out all this stuff in here. Uh, a lot of the stuff are basic tanks, um, so they'll take up a lot of room in our inventory. And then we're going to have a couple things right here, which are basically going to be used to make the, uh, if we look at it, I can't actually remember the name. We're going to be using it to make the ultimate control circuits. So we're going to need a couple of those today. That's pretty much the most expensive part. And then also, if we're going to actually start producing fizzle fuel today and not just setting up the process, we're going to need fluorite and uranium ingots. So we'll do that. And on top of that, we're also going to be using, I don't know if I got the stuff for it today, but there's the possibility of us setting up uh, an enrichment chamber over here too. So I don't know if I actually included that in the stuff we are going to be crafting today. Um, we can always use the one outside to start, but it'll make your lives a little bit easier if you want to keep one close by for processing the uranium ingots. So first things first, we will make the chemical infuser super easy to craft. Next thing we're going to do is make the chemical oxidizer. Again, very simple to craft. The next thing is the chemical dissolution chamber, and both this and the isotopic centrifuge are going to require the four ultimate control circuits we're going to be making. So we should produce all of these right now and just go through and go up the different tiers. So there we go and ultimate control circuits. So now we are good to make the chemical dissolution chamber, which otherwise is relatively cheap, some basic chemical tanks and some refined obsidian ingots. Uh, so there we go. And then lastly, the isotopic centrifuge, which is just lead ingots, a basic chemical tank, and then the two ultimate control circuits. So really the only expensive part of that. And it looks like I did not have the stuff for an enrichment chamber. I will discuss that though in the processing steps, but you are going to basically need that to turn the uranium ingots into yellow cake uranium. So uh, eventually you'll automate this, but if you want to have one close by for if you're manually doing it and you don't feel like, let's say, running outside right now to go over to our enrichment chamber, which is over here, then you could do that. So if we wanted to, we could just throw these in right now and allow them to process. They shouldn't be able to be smelted down. The yellow cake uranium itself should not be able to do that. So it'll just stay in there. So it's fine if we just dump it in there for now and produce that and leave it. But then along with that, I already grabbed them out. We're going to need the universal cables again because things need to be powered. And then also the basic pressurized tubes because we're going to be transferring uh, gases from various machines. So if you've already got the sulfuric acid production set up, then you will know that we ended at this chemical infuser right here, and we have it completely full of sulfuric acid. It's actually backing up in sulfur trioxide right now. Um, it's halted because we don't have more coal in here, so we can throw that in there just to continue the production. But the first step that we're gonna need to do when using the sulfuric acid is, actually that is making a fair bit of noise. So maybe we don't want that to be running while we're doing this. Um, and standing right next to it. But the first step is if we look at the uses for this, 
uh, actually, I guess this is the wrong sulfuric acid that I have bookmarked over here. Um, so if we go to fizzle fuel then, and at least look at the recipes, we can backtrack it. Um, to make this, we need uranium hexafluoride. And to make this, we're going to need uranium oxide and hydrofluoric acid. And so the uranium oxide is the very easy one to make. That's just going to be a single processing step with the yellow cake uranium. But the hydrofluoric acid is the one that we're going to be making right now. And that's going to be made in the chemical dissolution chamber with sulfuric acid and fluorite. So that's where that comes into this process. So what we're gonna be doing is pulling out the sulfuric acid from here and plugging it in right over here to the chemical dissolution chamber. So we'll put the chemical dissolution chamber down right here. And I believe if we look over here, there should not be anything uh, outputting from the side. We definitely don't want anything outputting in here. So we'll have it, uh, if this is what we're working with, we're working with water vapor for the gases. We just want that to be nothing. It's not set to anything right now, but just to be uh, safe. And then we wanna make sure that for the input, uh, we don't want the input to be anywhere except coming in the top. So what we can do then is grab out our basic pressurized tubes and come, if I could actually place them down properly. Also, we have an atomic disassembler. Um, people have been harassing me to make that for a long time, so we finally have it. Um, but we can, if I could properly angle it, we don't want that coming out the front. We just wasted so much sulfuric acid with that mistake there. Um, whoops. But what we're going to do is make sure that this side, if I could properly click it, there we go. So we'll disconnect that side because we don't want these hooked up because this right here is outputting uh, a gas and we want to make sure that this one is its own. And then we will run it over here and over here. And then we also want to make sure that this is not outputting anything. And I believe it already is right now. So we want to make sure that that is not connected on the top either. Okay, so there we go. So what we need to do over here then for the final step is make it so that for this, the output is on the top. So that should be, that's input two, so output on the top. So there we go, you can see it fills with that disgusting green colored uh, sulfuric acid. And now it is going over into the chemical dissolution chamber. And we're able to produce some more of this thankfully because we have some sulfur trioxide in here. Um, but now that we have it over here, if we wanted to produce the next step, we would put the fluorite in here. And if we applied power to the back of it, which we can do right now, just so that we get this out of the way, if we were to put this down back here, then this will start running and it's going to produce the hydrofluoric acid for us. So if you look at the recipe again for fizzle fuel, the uranium hexafluoride is made from the hydrofluoric acid and the uranium oxide in a chemical infuser. So we can grab the chemical infuser and put it down right here. And really all we need to do is pull out the hydrofluoric acid out the bottom of this. So we'll come to the gases and we don't want the output to be the side. We want the output to be the bottom. And then we're going to put down the pressurized tube right down here. And you should note that the hydrofluoric acid goes right into the chemical infuser in the proper side because the side configuration is already set to have input one on the left. Now what we need to do is produce the second thing that we're combining with that to make the uranium hexafluoride, which is the uranium oxide. And like I said, this is super easy. All it is is the chemical oxidizer with yellow cake uranium and some power. So this is the part where you could include an enrichment chamber adjacent to the chemical oxidizer on whatever side isn't hooked up to the chemical infuser. But really that's up to you. Uh, eventually, like I said, you'll wanna automate this. You'll wanna have automated mining that's going to get you all the uranium process, the yellow cake uranium, and then produce this if you're looking to do large scale fizzle fuel production. But if you're doing it manually, it can be easier to have it nearby, especially since you're going to possibly be interrupting your ore processing setup if you choose to use the one that we have outside. But if we were to put this down right here, uh, it should be all good to go actually. The output should properly be set, I believe. Actually, this one might need to be set on this side with how we put it down. Uh, so we can actually just run outside right now, grab out the processed yellow cake uranium. 64 should be plenty, we won't process any more for now and then drop it right in there and verify that it is able to actually produce uh, for us and input it properly. So there we go, and you can see that it's now outputting the uranium oxide right into the chemical infuser, just like we wanted, and we are producing uranium hexafluoride. And so really the last step that we have right now is just to put down the isotopic centrifuge, power it, 
and let it run. So there really aren't any super complicated steps to this. Uh, if we wanted to make sure, we can go in here and see that the gas output should not be on the front. It should be on the top, so make sure the blue is up there. And then if we come over to the chemical dissolution chamber, we can just verify that there is no output on the side of this to make sure that we're not improperly outputting anything into the centrifuge. So now we can just come down and I hate always trying to click these down on top of these ones with their textures. Uh, so there we go. Now we got it set down properly. I think it looks pretty cool. It's uh, a two by one block, so it's a little bit bigger. It's not a regular one by one machine. So it does look interesting in this setup. Obviously this whole setup in and of itself is, is pretty interesting. Uh, but you can see that if we look at the side configuration, every side is an input. We're gonna change that so that only the bottom is an input. And it doesn't really matter where the output is right now. Chances are I'm going to want to have it on the right side of it, since that's where we have an opening over here. But for now, it's fine to leave it just like this. Uh, and it should actually start producing for us if we apply uh, some power to it. So if we just bring the power up here, you can hear that it's relatively noisy, um, but it is now producing fizzle fuel. So we don't have a ton of it. It's going to take a while to get an appreciable amount of this, but we now have the completed production of fizzle fuel. So from over here, if we throw in more coal, it will produce the sulfuric acid, which is going to come out of there and go in here. We've got the fluoride in there, which we can keep full to turn the sulfuric acid into hydrofluoric acid. And then down here, we have the uranium oxide coming in with the hydrofluoric to produce uranium hexafluoride. And then in here for it to be converted to fizzle fuel. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's the whole production of fizzle fuel. It took two episodes because, as you can probably tell from looking at this, it's a relatively large setup. Uh, I think it's awesome. It's got a lot of steps from start to finish to get this actually produced. It's got a lot of, you know, different components that go into it. So I absolutely loved setting this up. Uh, some things that you guys, you know, advised me of that I could do to improve this that I had no idea you could actually do is I don't know if this was always a thing, but these uh, pumps can actually be submerged in the water right here. Um, I felt like that didn't used to be a thing, but apparently it is now that you can actually have them in the water block you're pulling from, which is awesome. Uh, obviously, in this setup, it wouldn't really do anything for you, considering you have machines on this lower level in some of these. So if you're keeping it kind of three high, um, then you would have these in the floor or you would have the water that would have to be surrounded up here. But I do appreciate that suggestion. I will keep that in mind in later episodes when we're doing builds. So that's a potential improvement. But I think for the most part, this is an awesome setup. It should be, you know, relatively good to get you guys going with some fizzle fuel at the beginning. And then later on down the line, we will probably make a much larger scale automated setup of this um, that will keep everything supplied with all the stuff that it's possibly going to need and make sure that uh, we don't run into, you know, a halted production of fizzle fuel if we're using the fission reactor as a main source of power generation. So if you know what we're doing after this, we're going to finally be setting up the fission reactor to make use of the fizzle fuel and produce us some nuclear waste in the next episode. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to that. And again, if you have any suggestions on this setup to make it look any nicer or anything, feel free to let me know. But honestly, I think it looks pretty cool right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know it's a shorter one, so I'll try and get the next episode out ASAP for you guys. But thanks for watching. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will talk to you later. Rolling past me, all my memories rolling vastly.